Good morning, Rachel. Please welcome back to my channel. So this week is our last week of this three-part ball python series where we are going to talk about the cost of a ball python. I did the same sort of thing with bearded dragons where I went over the initial cost of everything along with how much they cost per month. And I wanted to do the same for ball pythons as well because ball pythons are a lot of times people's first pets and they want to know what to expect. I will say before we get started that we are not going to include the price of the snake itself in this price estimate because as we know ball pythons can vary greatly in price. For a normal pastel we're looking at $25 to $35 and that quickly goes up to the thousands. So the price of the snake is 100% up to you and what you want what you are looking for in terms of more so we're gonna look at things like the setup just keeping them and feeding them and as with every single video guys I will link all the products that I talk about in the description any link that is an Amazon link is my affiliate link so that just kind of helps me out in getting things for my animals because that is where that money goes but if you want to use those links that would be awesome but everything is linked down below so let's get into that. The first thing that you do when you get a ball python is you set up for them. So first let's talk about enclosures. Now there are lots of different things you can do here as there are with bearded dragons, whatever animal. So we're going to look at two of the most popular ways of keeping them and that is glass tanks and sterilite bins. I know absolutely nothing about keeping them in racks or how much any of that would cost so sorry I'm not your girl there. But for keeping them in a glass enclosure or a sterilite bin, those two prices are going to vary a little bit. The cheapest of the two obviously is going to be a Sterilite bin. You're going to want to make sure that this is a large Sterilite bin at 40 to 50 gallons and you would also want to drill some kind of holes or something in there for air circulation so that the moisture in that tank isn't just stagnant and so that your animal can breathe. We're not going to include price of power tools here because that gets expensive quickly and I'm sure there are other ways that you can put holes in a sterilite bin. You can drill a bunch of holes in there. You can cut a large hole and put a screen over it. Lots of different things you can do here. But for just the bin itself, if you go to somewhere like Walmart and you pick it up, it's going to run you about 15 bucks for the whole bin. Glass tanks are definitely more expensive than that because you're going to have to buy the tank, a lid, and some kind of locking something to go on top so your snake doesn't escape. The glass tanks itself, I always say you should get them from Petco during their dollar per gallon sale. And during that, the 40 gallon breeders are not actually a dollar per gallon. They are 50% off. So here where I'm at, that's $45 for a 40 gallon breeder tank. The lid is also going to be cheapest at Petco at $23. And that is actually for the lid that has a half opening sort of setup. So you can just open half and grab your snake instead of having to take the entire top off to pull your snake out. And for locks, if you use the clip on locks, you are going to need four of those, two for each side on a 40 gallon breeder which is about eight dollars or if you have weights or anything like that you can put those on top to keep them from getting out. I always use the locks just because they're easy and they are very low profile. You can't really see them unless you're looking for them. It just looks a lot better than having a bunch of weights stacked on top of a tank. So that's going to be about eight dollars for those. So for a Sterilite bin you're looking at 15 and for a glass enclosure you're looking at about 76 dollars. So for the tank itself, we'll say 15 to $76. Next up, you're going to need some sort of substrate. Ball pythons like a higher humidity, and so the best thing for them is usually going to be a loose substrate. I use different things for my two different ball pythons. For him, he is currently on a mix of Eco Earth, Cypress Mulch, Orchid Bark, and Sphagnum Moss because he is the worst shedder, and his glass tank has a harder time keeping in humidity, which is an issue with glass tanks that wouldn't be an issue with a Sterilite bin. My 
my female ball python has always had the easiest time shedding and she is also in a 40 gallon tank and her substrate is just straight orchid bark. So depending on what you like, what looks good and what your animal needs is going to depend on the substrate. Eco Earth is going to be the cheapest at about $4 for a brick, but Eco Earth tends to dry out pretty fast and when it does, it gets kind of dusty. So a lot of people don't really like Eco Earth. My absolute favorite is orchid bark and that's about $10 for a bag. It would take about a bag and a half, two bags to fill up that tank. Or you can just, you know, buy a bigger bag. I don't know why that didn't occur to me while I was recording. Or you could do cypress mulch, which is about $13 a bag. Again, a bag and a half, two bags to fill up that tank. Or you could mix substrates, which I think works wonderfully most of the time. And you could buy, let's say, a bag of orchid bark for $10. And instead of another $10 for another bag, you could buy a $4 brick of Eco Earth and mix the two and you're you're good to go. So for this one, we are going to say that the substrate is going to range from about $8, which is if you did two bricks of Eco Earth, to about $26 if you were to do two bags of Cypress Mulch at $13 a bag. Keep in mind that substrate is going to have to be changed out about once a month, so that is going to be a reoccurring cost for you. Orchid Bark actually markets themselves as being able to reuse the substrate, and I have done it a couple times, but it's not my favorite to do, but you can clean orchid bark and reuse it. But just keep in mind that that is going to be something that you're going to have to pay for throughout your snake's life. Next up is heat. You will need heat so that your snake can thermoregulate and digest their food properly. I use heat pads and thermostats for this because I found that it works the best. Ball pythons are nocturnal, so basking bulbs aren't the best for them because they aren't used to coming out in the daytime to bask. They sleep during the day, they come out at night. So heat pads to me work the best because they can go into their hot spot hide and they can hide all day while staying warm and digesting their food and then they can come out and explore at night and be active. Heat pads are about $21 each for the appropriately sized heat pad and when you use a heat pad you have to make sure that you have a thermostat attached to it. Thermostats are super 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 important because heat pads get Hot. Heat pads can easily burn your snake. They could overheat themselves and start fires or damage the tank. If the tank's not vented properly, it can crack your tank. And best case scenario, if your heat pad's not attached to a thermostat, it's just going to be too hot for your snake and your snake is going to move away from it and not thermoregulate properly. And so it's gonna stop eating because it can't get onto its hot side for being too hot. Thermostats are super important. Again, heat pads are at about $21 and a thermostat is going to run you about 18 for the ones that I use off of Amazon. So that puts us at $39 for heat and you are going to need something to measure those temperatures to make sure the temperatures are correct. And for that, I use a temperature gun. Temperature guns are super awesome because you just reach in and you just zap their hot spot and it instantly gives you a reading of how hot it is. This is important because when you use the thermostat, you're going to tape it to the glass so that it'll stay in place and the temperature on top of the substrate that you put in there is going to be different than the temperature of the glass because the heat has to transfer through that substrate so it's super useful and easy to just zap their hot spot to make sure it's all right because that thermostat's probably going to have to be set a little higher and it also lets you see the cold side of the tank's temperature as well to make sure that your snake isn't too cold if it's winter time so that's just something that's super important in my opinion to have and that temperature gun is going to run you about $16 at very cheapest. I also always make sure to have hygrometers in my tanks. I use a thermometer hygrometer combo just because it looks nice. And if I just want to quickly make sure that it's not a thousand degrees in that tank like it is in my house, I can just glance. The hygrometer is super important because like I said, these guys like humidity, especially when they are shedding. You want to make sure that humidity is higher, but that is about $10. As I am recording this, Amazon is out of those hygrometers, so I can't get you an exact price but the last one that I bought I paid about ten dollars for. So strictly in terms of heating and temperature measurement we are looking at about sixty five dollars for initial setup. 
Now let's talk about what goes in that tank. Ball pythons are going to need at least two hides in order to thermoregulate. They're going to need a hide over their hot spot and a hide on the cool end of their tank so that they are free to go back and forth between those hides to regulate their body temperature without feeling exposed. So the cost of these hides is going to vary greatly depending on whether you go out and get your own items to make hides with, make sure you sanitize them, or whether you go and get Exoterra hides. You could even go to the Dollar Tree and get like Tupperware to make a moist hide for them when they're shedding. So it all depends on what it is that you get and what you like. So for this we're going to say it could cost anywhere from about zero dollars to about forty dollars and that's for store-bought hides. For enrichment this again is something that can go anywhere from free if you want to just get a bunch of driftwood from a local river or forest and sanitize them to a couple of dollars if you want to just go to the dollar store or Hobby Lobby, Walmart, wherever and buy the big fake branches. That is all they really need. Obviously for enrichment this could again go up to however much you want to spend because the possibilities are literally endless in decorating the tank for your snake. So for this one we're just going to say a couple of dollars just to be simple. You're going to need a water bowl. Ball pythons do drink water. Mine are often seen gulping lots of water right after they have eaten. So you need to make sure that they have a water bowl in there with clean water and that is going to again vary. You can go to the Dollar Tree and get like dog water bowls. I am currently using a dog water bowl for him that I got on sale for like $2 at Walmart. Or if you want naturalistic rock water bowls that are made for reptiles that can go up to about $30. And to treat that water, it is not the best thing to give snakes or any reptiles water that comes directly out of your faucet because it is chlorinated. I know that my water that comes out of my faucet literally smells like chlorine. So you're going to want to either treat that with RepTi-Safe or buy jugs of distilled water. I choose to go the RepTi-Safe route because you literally just use sink water and put a couple drops of RepTi-Safe in there and you're good to go and it lasts for forever. So Repti -Safe is about six dollars a bottle and even with all the animals that I have that little bottle lasts for easily two three months so that is only six dollars and you're good to purify your tap water for a few months so watering essentials is 11 to about 36 dollars And just a couple of odds and ends things that you may need. Number one is some sort of spray bottle or mister. This can be as simple as a dollar spray bottle from the Dollar Tree just to mist them down. So we'll say a dollar for that. I use a pump pressure mister which was five dollars at Walmart and I like it a lot better. It doesn't, you don't have to just spray the thing over and over you just kind of hold the trigger down and just spray it down and you're good to go but we'll say a dollar for that i also highly recommend some sort of background or blackout for your tank especially if you're going to use a glass enclosure it's just going to make them feel more secure and you can do this by using a dollar poster board from the dollar tree which is my favorite thing to do you can get real backgrounds you could get backgrounds printed but we'll just go ahead and say another two dollars for two poster boards to just tape to the sides and black out yourself and especially if you have a ball python that you notice hides a lot or doesn't really like to come out try putting black poster boards on those sides and see if it makes a difference i know for mine it made a huge difference and now that's what i do for almost all of my tanks I would also recommend some kind of something that will put more moisture in your tank for when they are shedding and I use sphagnum moss and I soak it and put it in his hot hide because that's his favorite place to be. But if you don't want to spend the $5 on sphagnum moss, you can also use paper towels. Just get a whole bunch of paper towels and soak them and stick them in there. Make sure you're taking them out so that standing water isn't sitting in your tank when they're not shedding. But that's about a dollar if you want to do paper towels for when they're shedding and that just helps them. On to feeding them. First, I recommend getting some 
rat tongs, the super long metal tongs, and that is just going to be so that you can feed your snake the rat, especially if you are doing frozen thawed, and that prevents them from accidentally missing that rat and biting your hands. Those are only about $6, and you only have to buy them once ever, and they are good to go because they're stainless steel. And for rats themselves, it's going to vary greatly depending on the size of the rats, what kind of rats you're feeding your snake and where you are getting from. So just me personally from where I get my rats from. The price for frozen rats are going to be from a little over a dollar up to about five dollars a rat. My both of my ball pythons are both eating large rats so they're eating five dollar rats and they are currently eating about two to three times a month. So that is only about ten to fifteen $15 a month for rats for them which is super cheap and when you first get them it could literally be about four dollars five dollars a month because they are going to eat little bitty rats and those are cheaper Now let's talk a little bit about optional things. First thing is a light. Ball pythons are nocturnal and they don't actually need a light on their tank. They don't need any kind of special UV lighting. They don't need a heat light. If you wanna put a light on your tank, it would be solely for day night cycle or if you have a bioactive setup, which we did not even get into in this video because that is a lot more money. <laughs> but if you wanted to do a light on the tank, I use, these cheap ones from Amazon. I think they were like five or six dollars and they're waterproof so if I miss them it's fine and they are there just to show day night cycle because the light in my bedroom is turned off during the day. If you have a light in the room that they're in that can be left on to show day night cycle. If there is a window that lets in light that could be used as your day night cycle for them but an actual light on top of the tank is 100% optional if you want it. Another optional thing is a snake hook especially if you are getting a baby who's a little snippy or even an adult that's a little snippy then sometimes using a snake hook to kind of let them know you're there and slowly pull them out of the tank helps so if that's something you want then you can also look into one of those that shouldn't be more than about ten dollars and a timer if you are going to use a light on your tank then it is super helpful to have have that light on a timer so that you're not having to switch it on and off every day. I use timers for most of my tanks and it makes such a huge difference. These can be very cheap. I got some of the ones that I use came from Walmart as opposed to a pet store with a ZooMed brand stamped on it. And at Walmart these timers are about five dollars and they actually have two plugs on them. Again 100% optional just something that is an option if you want. So in total for everything, we are looking at about this much. For a startup cost and for monthly cost, we are looking at this much. Also keep in mind that I didn't include any vet bills and that may be a cost that comes up at some point. And that is how much a ball python costs. I do not know about electric bill. That's something that I got asked before I did the bearded dragon cost video. I don't know. I couldn't even give you a ballpark. I don't know, but I'm assuming it didn't go up much at all with all of my animals because I think I would have noticed if I had a crazy jump in my electric bill. So I'm not sure about that, but that is the prices that I know as of right now with all the prices of things that they are now. Anyways, guys, that is it for this week. Hopefully this video helped you out a little, especially if you are getting a ball python in just knowing how much money everything costs, how much you're looking at there. But as always, guys, if you're not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put a new video, which is every Sunday and Wednesday. This week's Instagram shout out goes to BT501ARC for following me on Instagram and going through and like a whole bunch of stuff. Thank you so much. You are the bee's knees. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.
What are you looking at? What do you see? The lid is also going to be cheapest. You just hanging out? No, you don't want to. You don't want to hang out with me. That's cool. That's fun. <laughs>